In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the AC500, connecting them together to create a 240 volt system. Because if you only have one of these systems, it's 120 volts for this one, 120 volts for that one. You gotta connect them together to create a 240 volt system. And that's exactly what I've done here. It runs into this distribution box and powers everything in my shop, including mini splits, air compressors, all the lights, plugs, a lot of things that this thing could run at one time. I'm very impressed with it. I do wanna show you that. I wanna show you how to hook it up in a 240 volt system. So that way you have no problem doing that when you go to connect yours. If you have two of these to do that, you will need some accessories. I'll talk about those a little bit later in the video. And I wanna show you demonstrations of this running those mini splits, the air compressors, fans, different things like that. I've got it hooked to solar. I've got it hooked to uh, the grid for charging. So everything you need to know on how to get this set up and running, I'm gonna to try to cover that in this video. I'm gonna start by switching the main breaker and my transfer switch over to grid power. So right now we have this on a generator. So these are acting as the generator and this utility supply is turned off. So if we turn this on, now we're back on to the grid and we have no output on our AC 500s. And then next, I'm gonna disconnect all of the wiring and I'm gonna reconnect it so you can see step-by-step step how to do this because we have power um, cords here, we got power cords here, we got battery cables here, we got communication cables that are in here, and we even have a, a cable going into the transfer switch. And we have that going into the grid over there to charge the batteries when there's no solar hooked up. So I wanna make sure to cover all of that so you get a better idea on how to set up your AC 500s and get your system connected correctly. So the first thing that I wanna do is disconnect that grid power so we have no power coming in from the grid. Now we're totally disconnected. Next, we'll disconnect the solar array that is coming in to power it. Now I wanna turn off the AC output. And when I turn it off here, it'll automatically turn this one on because I have this connected with a communication port that when you control the master, the slave automatically does what the master does. So now we're gonna verify we have no power anywhere. We don't have nothing being used or coming in. And the same over here, nothing used or coming in. Now, I'm gonna disconnect everything. Now that we have everything disconnected, let's talk about the cables. This is your battery cable that connects your inverter to your battery, and this is a simple hookup. You basically, just take the cap off, you put in battery one slot, and you snap it into spot. Do the same thing for the battery. And that's your first connection between the inverter and the battery. And if you have two AC 500s, you're gonna do exactly the same thing that I'm doing on this one as you would your second one. I just don't have the angle for the camera to get in and show you on that one, but I'm doing exactly the same thing. And if you have no plans on connecting this to your grid power to charge the batteries through an AC connection, then this cable is not even important to you. But if you wanted to fast charge this at the uh, 50 amps, then you have to have the 50 amp cord that could charge this unit and that unit at the same time. And this is what happens. You plug this into a 50 amp outlet and then these two connect in to your master and your slave and it charges this up using your AC power, grid power when you don't have it connected to solar or you don't have sunshine to charge the batteries and you're running low. So this is important if you're using in that scenario this is not important if you're using only solar to power these. You can use uh, two arrays uh, to charge this one and two arrays to charge that one. So up to four arrays to charge. Uh, so you have two uh, MPPTs in each one of these units, giving you a lot of flexibility on how you build out your system. For me, I have a very small solar array that's charging both of these, and I do need the AC connection just for an emergency backup. And on these cables, you'll have AC1 and AC2. I put AC1 into the master. And this cable is rather heavy, so I have support coming down on the table. But you'll put this in the, the top slot, the AC input, 
and there's an arrow right here. I'm not sure if the camera will pick that up, but make sure that arrow is on top with that white dot that is on top of the uh, input and it'll slide right into where it needs to go. If you don't do that, you might get the polarity wrong. So just make sure you're doing that and then tighten it down as tight as you can get it. Next, I'm going to connect the DC cable. This is for connecting your solar arrays. So here's your two different um, MPPT cables coming in. This will automatically split them. You'll take the cap off of your DC input and this will only go in one way because it has a slot. So just tighten this down, uh, finger tight or as tight as you can get it with your fingers. And I should mention, I'm not connecting these to anything just yet. So I wanna get everything connected first and then I'll show you the process of doing that. You don't wanna be connecting these to power when you're messing with these cables, just in case something might happen. And the last cable you're gonna to need to connect on this side is your communication cable. And you can see here that it can only go in one way because the top slot is larger than the two bottom slots. Here's a side view of both of these with everything connected on it. And before I go any further, let's turn everything on. You're gonna get a notification so you're gonna have an alarm that's popping up here. This is because there's a communication error between the two, but that goes away if you have it connected correctly. So you can see that this one already cleared and that one is cleared as well. So let me talk about that real quick because in the settings, you'll go over to the single phase, split phase um, selection there. And we're gonna put this on single phase and now we're gonna get some errors. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this one into single phase as well. So now we got errors going off because they cannot communicate because we have it in single phase like if we had one box. So let's look at those. So we have a communication error. Now we're gonna clear that. And then we're gonna go back to the settings. We're gonna go over to single phase. We're gonna put that in split phase. We're gonna set this one as master. This one's going to get an error because we haven't set it to uh, split phase just yet. So we're going to go to single phase. We're going to put it in split phase. This one's going to be selected as the slave. And then we're going to X out of that. And you'll watch those communication errors will dis disappear. And you can see that the error codes have cleared. We don't have any audibles going off. So let's go back to home and then take this one back to home. So now we have these connected together with a communication port that allows us to output 240 volts. But we can't do that by just using this or any of these without that cable right there. So this cable is very important to connect your two 50 amp outputs together that then would connect into your transfer switch at the bottom. And the same for this cord, it's marked AC1 and AC2. If you remember, we marked this as AC1 and that's AC2. So I'm gonna keep everything AC1, AC2 on all of my cords if they're marked. So this is a simple process of just plug and play. And the last cable that we need to hook up is the one that goes to the grid. Because I've already got this set up to charge, you can see that we've got a pretty good charge coming in to get us back to 50%. Because I have a 50% state of charge set on these, once it depletes down to 50% or below that, the grid kicks on and keeps me at 50%. I'm gonna take that down to 25% here in just a little bit so you can see everything running from just the two AC 500s. But I did also wanna show you that the grid feed is working as well. And this just happened. You could see here, we reached 51%. So the grid power turned completely off. This one's at 50%. 
and it's still got a slow charge, but it's going to kick this off in just a second as well because it's already lowered the wattage coming in well below the 3000 watts. But let's see when that actually happens. See if I can capture that for you guys. There it went. As soon as it hit 51%, everything kicked off. Now there's no more grid power coming in. So that's just a good little example of if you have this set to a state of charge that you want your batteries to stay at and you have that grid connection that goes in right here, this comes down, feeds in, I can always stay at 50%. So if something happens, let's say a storm comes in that was we didn't foresee happening, we got 50%. On these two batteries and i haven't connected this back to the transfer switch just yet because i want to show you on that grid power if you're going to be using 50 amps then you, there's a special setting that you have to set this to because it's going to default to a lower input you're going to have to reach out to blue eddy and get a passcode from them so you can charge at the 50 amps now let's discuss how to set 50 amps for charge you're going to go to settings you're going to go over one you see down here where it says max uh, current settings, gonna hit advanced, and then you're gonna have to get that code I talked about. Then once you get that inputted, you'll come to this screen here and you can set up to a maximum of 50 amps of charge. So you would click that, then hit back, and that's what we're set at now. I do wanna cover what we're powering in this shop. So all of these dual function breakers are plugs and lights. And all these are 20 amp for the plugs and 15 amps for the lights. And then we have a 20 amp right here that runs a mini split that's in the office. And then we have a 20 amp 240 volt uh, breaker here that's running the mini split that's in the main shop. And we have a 30 amp water heater. This is not hooked up because I don't have the bathroom completed yet. That's a project that I'm working on. But that is a lot of items for this to be powering. And before I put any sort of load on the AC output, I'm gonna go ahead and connect my solar array. And now I wanna do some load testing. And before I transfer that from grid power to generator, I need to turn this on. So you just hit the AC, you turn that on. It's gonna turn both these on. You'll see them turn green at the bottom. So I just now clicked. So we have the AC on there and the AC on there. So now, we could transfer everything in the transfer switch from utility supply to generator supply. Right now, the generator supply is off and your uh, utility supply is on. So we're just gonna flip that over. And now we have the power being generated from our AC 500s and AC 500. We do have power coming from the grid and from the grid. So the way that I want to turn that off is through the app. And I wanna show you how to do that. We're going to go into the settings. We're gonna to go to the working mode and the state of charge setting. We're gonna turn that down, I like around 25%. We'll go back to our devices. We'll go down to the second one and then we'll go to settings. And we'll turn that one down to 25%. And now we're not using anything from the grid because we got a state of charge of 50%. Once these two reach 25%, we'll start pulling power from the grid again. And the AC500 can definitely power the air compressor that no other power station that I've tested can power this, but this one can with all the other things that are turned on. And I leave this turned off because if something ever happened where I had a leak, it doesn't constantly run. And you also can run the 12 inch miter saw that I use a lot in my shop, especially as I build this thing out for cutting lumber. And this is what it looks like when I turn the saw on from the screen. And as you've seen there, this thing uses a ton of juice 
when it first starts up. Probably not the most efficient way to charge this because we're converting from DC to AC back to DC to charge it. But I do charge this using the AC 500s because I can use solar to actually get it charged. And because I'm charging this with the AC 500 through the array that I have outside, it's not costing me anything for gas or electric to get this charged up, unlike my other zero turn mower. Eventually, my goal is to have everything electric from my mowers all the way to my vehicles, and this will charge up an EV. And I've also done a thermal scan on both these units while using the too many splits and pulling around 3,000, 3,500 watts on a continuous basis just to see if they would uh, put off a lot of heat. And I'll show you what that thermal scan looks like right now. So as those thermal images show, the AC 500 stay pretty cool even under a load. Now this is hooked into a 240 volt system. You see that it can do a lot of different things. If you can thank it, this could probably handle it because it can output up to 50 amps. There's not a lot of things that use 50 amps. You do want to keep in mind that you don't want to over exceed 50 amps on all of the different circuits that you have because this will shut down. You'll have to turn something off and turn it back on. So just be aware that it does have limitations, but I mean, from my experience, I'm running a 2000 square foot shop off of these two boxes and I'm not having any problems with it whatsoever.